Welcome to my uh, virtual poster booth. Um, uh, my name is Tasfai Tamtime. I recently finished my PhD at the University of Bristol, working with Juliet Peaks and others as well. I will present the <coughs> sorry, here the Sentinel One uh, observations to reveal uh, present the tectonic and magmatic activities in the Manitopian rifts. The motivation behind this work is to investigate the interaction between magmatic intrusion, volcanic centers, and fault systems, and to understand uh, spatial and temporal patterns of strain rates uh, in the uh, extensional rift setting. Just as a background, the South African rift systems is archetype of uh, uh, continental magmatic continental rifting. Uh, we can see uh, from early stage rifting in Malawi rift south in the south and uh, uh, late stage rifting or seafloor spreading in afar. So this image, uh, the interprogram shows you uh, what different characteristics within uh, this uh, rift system. And some of them are dike intrusion, some of them are uh, the inflation deflation due to uh, pressure change in the, in, the, in the magma system. And some of them are due to the uh, tectonic activity in the area. So, when you could, when you for, uh, come to the uh, main Ethiopian rifts, uh, it's, it's kind of a traditional rift system from uh, it is a transitional rift system, and it hosts uh, this uh, uh, the black triangle shows you the Holocene volcanoes uh, <coughs> and the Corbetti. Uh, Currently, Corbetti, Tulumoya, and Fantali are deforming. And I'll focus on Tulumoya and Fantali for this poster. Um, so, uh, when you come to Tulumoya, Jotamal Prospect Area, it's uh, a volcanic center and it's an active Jotamal Prospect Area. Currently, one Jotamal company is working on production of uh, Jotamal uh, energy for the country. Uh, but uh, this area shows you. Uh, similar uh, kind of spatial distribution of deformation or displacement, surface displacement in the uh, in this part. And uh, we use two ascending tracks and one descending track to see, to see the spatial pattern of uh, the surface displacement in this area. And when you see the, the profiles ac uh, across the rift and uh, Along along the uh, rift axis, we see such a similar kind of uh, pattern of uh, spatial distribution, and the average uh, rate maximum rate of uh, deformation is about five centimeter per year along the line of sight, and uh, we uh, anticipate that the, the source might be uh, due to, due to the magma pressure change in in, in the in magma system in beneath, beneath this volcanic system. And when you see the time series, uh, it shows you that it starts as uh, the <coughs> late 2015 and, um, um, and it continue uh, deforming and uh, it, show, it shows you, it, it seems like stopping in uh, late uh, 2018 and beginning of 2019. And, but we, we are still investigating what's the really actually going on in, the, this, in, the, in this uh, geothermal prospect area. The second uh, area, uh, focusing area is Fantal, uh, Fantali Volcanic Center. Um, in 2015, there was a seismic swarm, which is observed by the uh, National Seismic Network of Ethiopia. And as you can see here, the red dot shows you the seismicity during two months, uh, the March and April 2015. And uh, in this part of the uh, volcanic, uh, uh, Pantali Volcanic Center, it, it is not uncommon to see the uh, seismic activity. We, we saw uh, there was reports uh, the seismic activity happened in, in 1981 and in 1989, in 2003, and, and now in 2015. So 
and also there is a historical uh, um, uh, eruption in, in 1820, and there was a lava flow uh, south of the the crater, and uh, it's just north of uh, Matara town. Uh, so uh, we, uh, after the, the report of this uh, seismicity, we investigate the, what's going on uh, using the Sentinel-1 observations. And we see that uh, clearly there is a uh, like happen happen in, uh, <coughs> in the Tennis um, Fantale, we call it this one just northeast of the um, uh, Fantale uh, volcano, we call it Tennis Fantale. And uh, we order also cosmos climate uh, just to see the high spatial and temporal resolution, to get high spatial and temporal resolution. And we see that uh, in similar pattern of uh, surface displacements in four of the scenes. And uh, we conclude that uh, it seems like dike intrusion, we modeled this one and investigate the dike intrusion, uh, which is about six kilometers long um, and deep uh, up to uh, from two to six kilometers, which is a little bit deeper. and. <laughs> uh, which is four to six kilometers, sorry. And when you see time series uh, and we calculate the time scale of uh, deformation for this uh, uh, dike intrusion and the time, time scale shows you exponential decay and the time constant is about 83 days, uh, which is uh, two order of magnitude as of that of the of our dike intrusions and or uh, some other active uh, magmatic centers like the uh, in the in the Iceland. So, uh, so th this kind of observations can't be seen using Sentinel observations. If uh, if at all, if there is no any uh, Sentinel observation, we couldn't have seen such kind of. Uh, uh, Activities in in uh, in this part of uh, the world. So uh, the take home point here is uh, how Sentinel One observation uh, is really vital in assessing geohazard <coughs> in the geohazard perspective and to see and to understand what's what's uh, going on in in. And the main uh, in the East African system, particularly in the main Ethiopian Rift and in Afar, where there is no uh, that much in situ measurement in, in the area. So for for further reading, you can you can refer um, work done by Arbino and Bix in 2021 this year, and also the, which I published in GQ in last year. We can refer for that. And if you have any questions, uh, you are welcome. Sorry, we, I have uh, called uh, so that I can't uh, recall properly. So anyway, if you have any question, you are welcome. Thank you.